It's a beautiful Saturday morning. Actually, it's more like noon, I guess, at this point in Yokohama. There was a surprising amount of garbage as I left the house today. I've just gone around the corner to go up the hill of the bluffs. And I was like, oh yeah, because it's Saturday. And then that reminded me that, oh yeah, last night in the dead quiet of the little neighborhood I'm in, I heard some drunk guys going by just yelling <laughs> and hooting and hollering. And it's like, oh, I haven't heard that much in Japan. And then, uh, that was really late. That was like two in the morning. Since I'm in this building all by myself, it does start to conjure images of, because I had headphones in. I was like, what the heck's going on? And I had to pull them out and figure out what's happening. And then I realized, oh, it's like a drunk guy. But being late at night, it's easy to imagine scenarios. <laughs> what if, it's like, I'm sure I locked the door and everything's fine. <laughs> but what if they tried to get in here? And what if they busted in the door and they got to the, uh, the hallway? And what if they're outside my door and they can't get through the lock right away, but I have no way to escape? And what if they're saying like, we can wait as long as we need to, we're right out here. <laughs> and it's just like, oh yeah, this is just what like thrillers and suspense movies, this is what it's all about. Is uh, primal base human fears. <laughs> Of course it's Japan, all of that's insane. None of that's gonna happen probably anywhere, but certainly not here. It's just nighttime thoughts. But the upside to all that is it's the weekend and I still got this whole place to myself. My plan coming here in the winterish time was to cut down on other travelers and make things a little easier. And maybe I did, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Though apparently the fall is pretty popular here because of, uh, you know, autumn leaves. It's the next best thing to uh, spring cherry blossoms. But this is where you can really feel it for sure. Now that we're deep into January, this is very clear evidence. No one else is in my Airbnb. It's just me. And that's cool. <laughs> I love having the whole building to myself. It's just a cool feeling. The fairly rare, but awesome, $21 a day, $22 a day, whatever, entire building in Japan. <laughs> Not an easy thing to pull off, but when it happens, it's awesome. And because I got lucky this year, it's like 12, 13 degrees today. It's fucking beautiful, sunny. The three months I've been here, I can count on one hand the number of kind of bad weather days. This is ludicrous. All right, I'm at the uh, Yamate Italian Rose Garden because it's literally just behind my Airbnb. I'm gonna walk through here again, like I did last episode. And I'm gonna try to triangulate. There's this weird building you can see in the distance that's like a blue, dome, a light blue dome, and I can't figure out how to get to it through this super confusing snarl of streets. So I'm going to go try to figure out with Google Maps, I'm going to go point myself at that thing and try to figure out where it is and put a dot on my map and use that and see if I can get there. Why am I doing that? Kind of because, uh, because why not? Like, <laughs> I explored all of Naka Ward, and it turns out this little neighborhood directly around me is the best part with the bluffs and all the cool touristy shit and the rose gardens and fountains and amazing views. So I might wander further away today, but, uh, but I'm kind of motivated to stay nearby because it's so awesome. So I mean, hey, it's just something to do, something to try to do. A little adventure to put myself on. And this place is just pretty. I looked it up on YouTube just out of curiosity. Yamate Italian Garden in Yokohama. So I get to see what it looked like in the spring and the summer. And it does look better, but it don't look bad now. It's still really fucking good. All right, I think I, I, think I got a pretty, good, a pretty good bead on this thing where uh, I could see the big uh, Yokohama Bay Bridge. So I lined that up to be approximately right. And then there's the big Marine Tower, 
once I found that on the map, that was a real good one. It's like, okay, get that set properly. And this is where if I had an internet connection, having the topographical map would help like crazy because this blue building is right next to a big cliff. So I'm trying to figure out just based on what's on the map of like, okay, where's the spot where there just is no stuff? Because that probably is the cliff. But having the elevation would actually help. Okay, this is good to know. I got another view of the blue building as I'm walking down hill and I'm lined up with it now. I'm like a little below it. So it's not on ground floor, it's above the street. So that definitely explains why I didn't find it yesterday. But I have to go further down to get there, so we'll see. But this big uh, elevation that it's next to, this big hill, surely that will help. This thing too, if I've got the right thing pinpointed on my little map, it's less than 300 meters away. It's so close, but that's just like impossible. Impossible, these bluffs in this neighborhood. It's so confusing and so cool. Okay, here's, here's the same stairs I came up, a little shrine. I'm gonna do this, man. I'm gonna figure out how to get to this place. I got another Zelda coffee. I got the stupid bird again. Man, I'll get into it later, but uh, I met a guy yesterday who lives in this neighborhood some random ass dude standing around trying to find people to talk to or whatever. I'll, I'll get into it. But it's weird when you live in a place and you just, you don't get that tourist mind of just being excited by it. Because this dude literally lived down the street from the Italian Rose Garden with the miniatures. Like, it's got like a whole setup of miniature buildings. And he didn't even know it was there. He never heard of it. It's like, five houses away from his house. <laughs> but because he lives there, he's just like, oh, whatever, just walk by it every day. It's just something in the neighborhood. It's not a thing. And I find that such a weird phenomenon. It's not quite the same, but one of my Vancouver friends, he grew up technically not in Vancouver, like two, two towns over, but it's all connected into the same, you know, you can get there on the SkyTrain. And there's a super famous part of Vancouver. It's this big park called Stanley Park that's like the same size as downtown. It's like downtown again, except it's a park. And there's a seawall. You can walk along the edge of the seawall. And it was one of the first things I ever did because I'm like, wow, cool Vancouver, let's go explore. And Doug had never done that until he was in his 20s. <laughs> and it just that blows my mind because he lived too close. It was just a thing that was local that it's like, yeah, whatever, who cares about that? And it's just like, wow, that's fucking weird. All right, I'm funneling down the same way that I did yesterday, which for sure didn't work. Now that I'm down in amongst the buildings, I can't see any landmarks or anything. I'm gonna see though if I can manage this without the dot that I placed on my map, but I'll use the dot if I have to, because I just wanna, I wanna wrap up this adventure. So where is, maybe if I can just see the big, the big cliff side, the big hillside. All right, I think, I think I see the hillside behind some buildings. Though this is certainly weird because I didn't realize the blue building was elevated so much. I mean, it makes sense. That's how I was able to see it. <laughs> I met the same crosswalk that I mentioned last episode where it's this tiny, tiny little narrow lane of a street that's been just a walking street. Someone's walking a stroller down it right now. There's like no traffic, but people still wait. They still wait for the red don't walk sign to turn green. And there, there's two ladies that were waiting. They just finally, finally got to cross. But I'm kind of happy to report that right there, I did see an old lady. She stopped briefly and she's like, ah, fuck this. <laughs> she just crossed. <laughs> Because, uh, I mean, I do respect following traffic rules. It makes things a lot easier for everybody. But that is a spot where there is zero, zero reason to be waiting to cross this thing that is like one step and you're across. Well, maybe two steps. <laughs> that one, there's no need to wait there. And it seems kind of appropriate that it was an old lady who's like, I'm not fucking doing that. <laughs> anyway, I think I saw the cliffside through some buildings, but it is amazing how once your perspective shifts, once you're down on the ground, man, like an entire mountain just disappeared. I just can't see it anymore. And I was like, all right, I think it's over this way, but now, now I'm stuck. I'm being funneled the same way I was yesterday. I can't get any closer. 
I'm like looking for ways to move over in that direction and they ain't here. Okay, here we go. There is a route going toward where I think I need to go that's leading to a shrine. So could that thing be connected to a shrine somehow? Hmm, there's a little park and a shrine and a big cliffside. So I mean, that has to be the one, right? There can't be, how many can there be around here? Though the shrine doesn't seem to go any farther. Yeah, this is the big cliffside. Man, this podcast has reached new levels of abstraction where I'm just trying to find a random building that no one cares about and no one could possibly even know what I'm talking about. And I'm just trying to describe it while I do it. <laughs> so stupid. But this is so weird. It's like, okay, there's the, the hillside. Where the frig did that building go? How is it just gone? Aha, man, it's so tricky. Because once you're in like these little alleyways and stuff, like you just, you can only go where you can go. And uh, there's no guarantee that things will flow into another place in Japan either. It could be a literal just dead end. But I just saw, here's some stairs that I'm heading up. Turned around the corner. I think I see it, I'm heading up the stairs. Now I can only hope that there's a large English language plaque that explains in clear language <laughs> what this fucking place is. But it must be something because there's stairs leading up to it. And it really is a bizarre looking building because it's like, I say it's a dome, but it's like a, a tetrahedron, a polyhedron, <laughs> a hundred sided hedron, whatever that's called. Hedrahedron? I don't know. It's not very big. It's just weird looking. Man, is it just a house? <laughs> is that all this is? Yamamitsu. It's got a painting of its own dome outside of the gate. And a little doorway. And an entry lamp. And a place to put mail. <laughs> I think it's just a house. It's just a weird house, I guess. Now let's see, when I pull up my map, if the little marking I made is actually where I'm at. Nope. So whatever this is, it's not important enough because the thing I found on the map was a place with a Japanese name, but I don't know what it was. This ain't that. I was hoping maybe once I got internet, it's like, oh, well, maybe I can click on this and get a, a, an idea of what it is. I think it's just a house. I think it's just a weird looking house. Well, not every adventure has a, a super amazing, mind blowing ending. In fact, none of them do on this podcast. <laughs> so. So anyway, I guess let me tell you about this guy I met yesterday. Let me tell you an actual story of a thing that actually happened. I'm going to keep going up these stairs because I don't know where these lead. But yeah, basically as I was coming home yesterday, right by the, the Rose Garden, I was getting a little confused, a little turned around. It's basically right by the, the view that I saw near the Rose Garden where I was like, oh, it looks like Fallout New Vegas or whatever. I was just trying to get back to the Airbnb and I, I guess I was kind of going down possibly the wrong street and then on top of that again like going straight to a dot doesn't work like I was close to home but I was following directly down and I was like I walked a little ways and I'm like I think this is just a driveway I don't think this is gonna connect in so I came back up and a guy asked me in really good English like if I was lost if I was looking for something because I clearly did look like I was lost <laughs> like I was looking for something because I'm just wandering down the street one way came back the other way went partially down a possibly a driveway, then back up. <laughs> I was like, what, am, what is this guy doing? He doesn't know what he's doing. So this was an Asian guy, although his name was Andrew. He's in his 30s and he, uh, you know, his English was like 99%, 98%. You know, he forgot words sometimes or whatever. Or he had to say things to himself in Japanese and then say them in English. But guy in his 30s, lived in America, has an American name, pretty fucking easy to communicate with this fellow. But, uh, I don't know, it was just kind of weird where I guess I've had this experience before of like, you know, it's not like I uh, met this person in a venue that's like, you know, if you meet someone at a meetup for something that you're interested in, or you even just meet someone through an Airbnb who has great reviews, those go well and that's awesome. You just meet random people on the street and it's just a random person on the street, <laughs> especially in a country where people don't talk to you. 
the person who does talk to you. It's probably not going to be <laughs> the, the fucking new best friend that you were always hoping for. But this guy was not trying to get me into his Buddhist sect or anything. Although, the guy trying to get me into his Buddhist sect in Chiba, he was actually a super fun conversationalist, you know, until it all devolved into religious weirdness. I actually really enjoyed hanging out and talking to that guy. Where this dude, I guess, uh, well, what he told me as we were yammering is, uh, he wasn't just asking if I was lost. He was standing outside his house, because he lived right there, and just kind of on the lookout, you know? And he's like, I saw you, and you're like, you just look like suspicious. Like, are you trying to case the joint? What are you doing? Or whatever. Which is like, of course, what the heck? No. <laughs> you know, I think that kind of, that's a good way to describe this guy. He's the kind of guy who doesn't really have much else to do besides go stand around outside his house and be wary, be vigilant for people that might be trying to break in, you know? A, a situation that is, is never going to happen. <laughs> and as I talk to him, it is like he's into conspiracy theories and deep into internet stuff. When I told him I was from Canada, his, uh, his first point of reference for Canada was Jordan Peterson. <laughs> I'm like, that's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> I'm basically Jordan Peterson neutral. He's this guy from Canada who, they were trying to like pass some really weird laws in Canada. Just like well-meaning stuff about trans rights and stuff that, that are socially progressive, but they probably shouldn't be laws. You know, once you make something a law, that's pretty heavy. So this guy, Jordan Peterson, he was the guy who kind of made himself the villain by standing up and saying, you can't make these into laws. So I kind of appreciated him on that level. But then he became this big figure that people, you know, people that want to be fucking weird argumentative dickheads. <laughs> They're like, oh, great, There's, now we have a new, a new guy who will get in arguments on our behalf. And I don't know, I find most of what I looked into about Jordan Peterson just, just crushingly boring. Just a real boring guy who's into really boring shit. But, like I was saying, I appreciate that he was willing to be the villain about stuff where it's like, yeah, you know, and it's, you just can't make this a lie. You just can't. It doesn't need to be, it can be a social law. It doesn't need to be a real law. <laughs> you know, it's just too far. So I'd say that part, that puts me pretty neutral. I ain't firm, I ain't again, I'm just whatever, just some guy. But I mean, I feel like the fact that this dude I was talking to, his only frame of reference for Canada <laughs> was fucking Jordan Peterson. It's just very funny, because it really does paint the picture of who this guy is. He's an internet troll. <laughs> and, <laughs> and just one of these guys that like, like there is no conversation. Even literally what I just said to you there. You know, that's a relatively, that's something you can talk about. That's a, a, a situation with a couple of angles to it. But talking to this guy is like talking to a wall. You know, you're just looking for an opening. And he never reciprocated. He just said his next thing that was on his mind. <laughs> you know, it was a very one-way conversation. He's clearly just kind of a weird guy. And not just like global spanning politics. Maybe that is tough to talk about no matter who you're talking to. But, uh... You know, like the Gundam statue came up and he's like, oh yeah, I'm not really into Gundam, I'm more into Evangelion. And it's like, oh yeah, I could talk about that. I know, I've seen Evangelion. But like the conversation, like whenever there's like, okay, yeah, I know about that, I know about this. And the conversation just never went anywhere. <laughs> it just like he refused to, it's like you're playing tennis and you refuse to hit the ball back. But I don't think he was trying to be rude. He's just, he's just fucking on the spectrum or something. He just doesn't know that he's doing that. And at first I'm like, yeah, how do I meet these people? But it's like, oh yeah, it's because I'm not. I'm not going out of my way to meet people. I'm not going to find people who I would get along with. This is just a guy who talked to me on the street. <laughs> that's, that's sort of the issue here. When you just wait for a guy to talk to you on the street, you get, you get the guy who is standing on the street trying to talk to people. That's what you get. But he was a nice enough guy. But it is funny that like he's right, he lives right there. He apparently stands around on the street, <laughs> semi-commonly. And considering he started off being uh, concerned about people breaking into his house, it then became like, well, hey, if you're going to be around, you know, just come by. I'm going to, I live right here. I'll be around. Heck, knock on the door, whatever. You can meet my mom, all this stuff. And it's like, no. <laughs> 
now it's almost kind of weird because it's like ah, I guess I I think I'm gonna kind of not walk that way just because I just if I bump into them by accident and it's a small neighborhood they're like hey, hey buddy hey dude what's up but it kind of blocked off a street now where it's like yeah I just I don't you know <laughs> he's like not the worst I mean he's like he was a nice enough dude and stuff if I even could have had a semi conversation with him Maybe I would. I mean, I don't know. Fuck it. Can't hurt to know somebody who spent some time in America and now his family lives in Yokohama and he, I don't know. But I just was like, ah, man, uh, this guy, he's a, he's a, this ain't, this ain't going nowhere, man. <laughs> even if it's just a nice, polite, pointless conversation, we can't even get that going because this guy is just a, just a, He's uh, not socially aware. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I was really surprised that uh, he didn't know about the rose garden because it's right at the corner. But I guess maybe it is the thing of like, like this neighborhood is, is full of gardens and fountains and cool, amazing shit. Like maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe it is just like, hey, whatever. <laughs> whatever, dude. <laughs> I live under the eyes of the giant Gundam. I don't give a shit about all this touristy shit that's around here. Like, I'm trying to think of my hometown. Did that happen to me? Is there stuff in my hometown that I just never noticed or paid attention to? I don't think so, because I just don't think there is anything in my hometown. <laughs> but, but it's certainly an interesting phenomenon. And it is, like, fun to be a traveler and to have those eyes of the new person. Because, like, yeah, when I first got here, I'm like... Man, I cannot believe how great Yokohama is. I'm so glad I'm here for two weeks. At first I was like, oh, two weeks, it's going to be a long time. But now I'm like, yeah, great, two weeks. But I've only been here a few days, and now I'm already kind of not sure where to go. Because I gobbled up this neighborhood so fast. It's like, yeah, I've been all over. I've seen all this stuff in Naka Ward. Hmm, now what? <laughs> you know, I've already been to the several of these places twice. Twice in two days. Like, it does get normalized really, really fast. And then you either got to find new angles on the neighborhood, new stuff to do, or you just go somewhere else. You move on, you know? Which ain't the worst. I mean, maybe I'll just move on forever. Maybe I'll just move on to different countries and see new stuff till the day I die. I think there's plenty. I think there's enough stuff in the earth that I could do that. See, this is so weird where it's like, is this street now? Hmm. He did mention how there's a lot more Western churches than usual around here, because there's just a Western vibe in general. And I'm walking past a church, and this is a semi-major street, and I'm at the top of the bluff. I'm like, is this his street? Am I walking? Am I just going to go accidentally walk past this guy's house? <laughs> you know? The ultimate introversion. I met one fucking person in Yokohama, and it's one person too many, where I'm like, ah, geez, now I gotta avoid this guy. <laughs> now I gotta not bump into this guy. <laughs> like, Jesus fucking Christ. What a life. What a fucking weird solo life I live. No, I don't think so. Actually, this street is this is too this is too major. This is not the street. We're good. Although we are walking by a church, Church of the Sacred Heart, so that's creative. The Western churches aren't so great around here. They're certainly not, uh, I mean, they're small, just like everything small in Japan, where I feel like a Western church is supposed to be like Montreal, you know? It's supposed to be a fucking great big thing that uh, shocks you into compliance. But anyway, I gotta get something to eat. <laughs> I have not eaten anything today. So it turns out my spidey sense was appropriately tingling when I was like, am I, is this? Yeah, it was actually, I was right by, I was right by that dude's house. <laughs> so he was not standing outside at, at 1 p.m. I'm probably making too big a deal about all this crap. It's just, uh, I just don't know how to politely extricate myself without having a big long conversation. I mean, I talked to that dude for like 40 minutes. Because, you know, it's just politeness dictates. I don't know. <laughs> he did give me an out. He asked if I was busy. And I was like, well, I mean, no, I'm really not. <laughs> so, man, I was thinking, though, who's that guy I met in Fukuoka? Tom, I think his name was. 
but he was like a software developer guy from Germany who I met on a mountain, on a hiking path. That guy was cool. Like, that's a good example of, like, you know, if I'm out hiking and I meet a person who's hiking, chances are we're going to have something in common vis-a-vis hiking. Like, I could have been friends with that fella for sure. Could have gone on hikes. It doesn't take much to be friends with somebody. I've always found it pretty easy to make friends, if anything. <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't know. It is interesting when it's like, man, I just don't know. I just don't know what foothold there is here. I don't know how to be your friend. So I was kind of drifting off toward the edge of Naka Ward. I went to the, uh, the Lawson's I was at yesterday to see if they had more barbecued fish, but they did not. It's not as good as the, uh, the one 7-Eleven had, but it was still pretty good. But you never know. You never know what you're going to get with Kambinis. So while I was over there, I was like, all right, I'm kind of on the edge. Well, I am literally at the edge of how far I've been before. I could head off farther away into the wild blue yonder. Who knows what's out there? Well, whatever's out there, I mean, I I guess we'll see, but it's probably not as cool as all these bluffs. And even though the uh, delirious wonder (laughs) of first getting somewhere and being like, whoa, this is nuts. This place is not like anything that I expected. Even though that uh, traveler's high, explorer's high does wear off (laughs) where it's like, wow, this actually is a really small area. Everything is so close to each other now that I'm starting to get a lay of the land. And, uh, and instead of like, whoa, look at this amazing park that goes down into the depths and has archers in it. Like I just walked by that park and it's like, oh, there's the amazing park that goes down into the depths with archers in it. <laughs> you know, it changes, changes the vibe a bit, but it's still, still pretty great. So I just felt myself tugged back toward this way, toward the Harbor View Park where I'm at now and just the bluffs and the views, man, that's, uh, <laughs> that's enough for today. That's good. Man, too, when I saw that uh, bluff number 18 was near my Airbnb and I was like, oh, I wonder, you know, I can't really see going through numbered sequential itemized, try to go to all the bluffs, but if there was like 20 of them, yeah, you know, be a bit of a weird thing to do, but kind of cool. But the park I passed the other day with all the tennis stuff. Apparently even has a tennis museum. <laughs> Real into tennis in that park. But uh, that was bluff number 68. So I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. I wonder how many there are. <laughs> like, definitely forget that. That's, uh, that's a serious undertaking to go to all the bluffs. And then on the way over here, it's remarkable how cold it gets. Just with uh, some clouds rolling over got a little overcast and it's like oh put on my other layer if I can get my little gloves on and stuff the weather definitely has no chill (laughs) yesterday it was like brutally hot so today I left one of my layers at home because it had too many and now it's like oh shit oh maybe I do need it (laughs) (laughs) however that's again the great thing about being near all this stuff having an Airbnb right by all these bluffs and all this cool shit is the first couple of days I was here, I split them into like double days where I'd go back in the late afternoon and take a little nap and then head out again at night. It's like, ah, that's a nice feeling, not having to like push through an entire long day because I'm miles away from everything. Oh man, looking out at the harbor, holy fuck, that's a good view. Man, this is kind of cool now. It's like the, uh, the Big Bay Bridge with dark oppressive clouds over them it looks fucking sweet but yeah i can just head back because i'm actually i'm I'm kind of wiped today maybe because yesterday i did a whole epic journey with no with no break so i think i'm gonna mosey back that way take a little nappy nap maybe i'll head out tonight and do more stuff well no doubt i will just purely even to get something to eat whether i'll podcast anything else i don't know maybe we'll just skip straight to tomorrow But yeah, I'm not really sure because this little area, it is so cool. It's so good, but I I can't just walk around this one little area over and over for the next week and a half or whatever. Maybe I should just pull the trigger on a on a more serious journey. Maybe tomorrow I should just like try to get to the coast or just do something. Because I have a feeling for the uh, 
direct vicinity. In one direction, it's the big downtown. In the other direction, it's uh, residential stuff. It seems like it will pale a bit in comparison to the bluffs. On the other hand, I guess I could, like, what if I just head into downtown towards central Yokohama and just keep walking? Just walk and walk and walk and see if it turns into something else, see what happens, because I could always take the train back also. Yeah, we'll see. Many things. Because yeah, that's one thing, too, with this bluffs neighborhood, as fucking cool as it is. Man, my ankles really hurt yesterday. Every time I got up and put pressure on them, Yesterday evening, after all that walking, it's like, holy fuck, that's weird. Man, my ankles hurt, because with all the mountain climbing, it never made my ankles hurt. It must just be, because this is not like just a big, severe walk up a mountain. This is just constant up and downs, up and downs, up and downs of smaller mountains. And yeah, man, my knees were fucking hurting. Like, I don't feel anything right now, but maybe I will later, you know? <laughs> so it's interesting. New and interesting physical ailments. But yeah, for today, I'm just gonna mosey back down to the old Airbnb. Probably zonk the fuck out. And then we will either resume tonight if something cool happens or tomorrow. All right, so that was an uneventful episode, huh? <laughs> so for this episode, in my original audio, I had this day and the next day combined as one episode because I'm like, that was like half an hour long and I didn't do anything. <laughs> you know, like, I know I never do anything, but that was like, I really didn't do anything. But now that I'm sitting here editing the episode, I'm like, yeah, you know what? Fuck that. <laughs> That's the day. That's an episode. And then the next day will be another episode. But I will give you a little update of things to come because uh, one reason why I'm doing that is just because tomorrow I've got a travel day and uh, I just don't want to sit around and fucking edit this podcast today. It could be over right now. <laughs> this could be the end of the episode. And I could go get started on my travel prep. Because basically what's about to come in the podcast is I'm going to start going down to the southern coast near Yokohama. And I'm going to keep going a little further west and a little further west and realize like, wow, these trains, they just keep going. I wonder how far I could go. However, I had limited time left in Japan on that trip. So, uh, you know, I made it a, a little ways, but not a crazy long way. But that got in my head of like, oh, next time I'm in Japan, that's what I want to do. I want to try to just keep going down the coast and see what happens. So, in the current timeline, that's where I am. That's exactly what I'm doing. From Yokohama, I went down the coast a couple hours on the JR train. Tomorrow, I'm going a couple more hours. Then the week after that, I'm going a couple more hours. And then I'll be at Osaka. And you can just do that. You can just get on. I mean, there's a Shinkansen, too, if you're in a big hurry. But it doesn't even take that long on local trains and you can just use your normal train card, your Suica card. And it's just like, holy fuck, <laughs> this is working. This is nuts. So that's what I'm doing right now. That's coming in the future. However, because that's what I'm doing right now, this episode is over. <laughs> I am making that the whole episode. Fuck it. Will something more interesting happen? for the next episode that'll happen the day after? To be honest, I don't remember, but probably not. <laughs> I mean, like I said, pretty soon I'm gonna go to the coast and I'll go to Yokosuka and Doboita and stuff. There's stuff, I'm gonna do some stuff. But at this point, I certainly can't guarantee that I'm gonna do anything. Next episode might be just as eventless as this one. Oh, a blue domed house. Let's go see if I can find, <laughs> like coming back to uh, Yokohama, I went up to the Yamate Gardens and I'm like, oh yeah, there's the blue house. Why the fuck did I give a shit about that? I, who knows? Anyway. <laughs> anyway, there's that episode. I hope you enjoyed. Tune in next time for what was supposed to be the other half of this episode, but is in fact a separate discrete day. And yeah, the scope, the scope is about to expand. So look forward to it. All right, I'll see you then.